I want to talk about loudspeaker placement. It's a topic I feel very passionate about because it's the one thing that when you get it right can really transform your system. And up until the last few years, I mean like three, four years ago, I thought I knew quite a lot about loudspeaker placement and I thought it was quite straightforward to explain to someone how best to, to place your loudspeakers in your room. But in fact, as I've grown older, I've realised it's a little bit more complicated. In fact, it can be very complicated. The mathematics of, of, of acoustics and loudspeaker placement is extraordinarily complex and there are algorithms running to help you with all these things. But in fact, the solution that I've found is very easy and very straightforward and very pragmatic. And it will help you no matter what kind of loudspeaker you've got, whether you've got a pair of Sibelius speakers with a front-loaded port like we have at the bottom, or whether you've got rear-loaded ports, or whether you've got infinite battles, baffles, totally enclosed loudspeakers, or magna pans and electrostatics with their open backs. They're all completely different and will need different treatment, but the solution is actually the same. So bear with me, and what we're going to do is I'm going to sort of talk you through the process that I'm thinking, and we will, we'll come round to coming up with the right solution. But first of all, I want to go back, and I want to really explore the very basic and most important question of all, and that is, why do you want to put a stereo pair of loudspeakers in your listening room in the first place? Now that might seem like a, a daft question, but it's a very important one to get right. And you've got to be honest and truthful with yourself on this. So for example, if your answer to the first question is, well, I want to listen to music, and I want to listen to music with my partner, and we like to enjoy a glass of wine and sit and relax and listen to string quartets or jazz trios or whatever. Or it might be, I just want to fill the room full of music, so no matter where I am, if I'm sitting or working or walking around, it just fills the whole space like an organ in a cathedral. Or it might be that this is your one special room where you want to go and sit quietly on your own and listen to music and close your eyes and hear the, the musicians in front of you all neatly laid out, singer in the middle, drums right at the back, bass to the left, and then the keyboard or guitar on the right, or you might have three guitars and you might want to hear them all neatly spaced out exactly as it would be if you were at a live concert. Because the answer to those questions will make a huge difference on how you place the loudspeakers. Because if you want the last case, the, the perfect sound stage, what we call sound stage, um, you've also got to think about, well, how wide did you want your sound stage? I mean, when you go to a concert, let's just assume it's an acoustic concert for the moment, so the musicians are, are placed on, on, on the stage. Do you like to sit right at the front? So there's a big distance between one instrument on one side and one instrument on the other, and you're almost physically turning your head. I mean, if you go to the Berlin Philharmonic, um, fantastic building there in Berlin, and you're going to listen to a big Mahler symphony, I mean, you really are physically turning your head if, if you're at the front, because it's such a big stage. On the other hand, you might say, no, 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 I like to sit halfway back. And therefore, the, the, the distance, the proportional distance between the left and right becomes narrower. Or you might say, no, no, I like to be right at the back. Well, then it's almost coming at you in mono because it's coming straight at you and the, and, and the stage is very, very narrow. So that's a very important thing because that's how you're going to set it up. And that's very easy, of course. So the further apart your loudspeakers and the closer you are, the wider the stage. You just have to imagine your left and right like the, the musician on the left and the musician on the right. Now there's a, a, um, a CD that I got from Hi-Fi Plus magazine and um, it was given away free with it. 
And there's lots of these CDs for setting up your hi-fi and everything. But on this one, and I'll put the, the details of it in the notes of the video, there's a man talking and he says, you should hear me on the left and you should hear me on the right and you should hear me in the middle or in between the two. And he has a pair of castanets, a castanet going tick, 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 tick. And he walks round the room and he goes right to the back and then right forward to the front and then to the left and then beyond the left speaker and then beyond the right speaker. And trust me, if you place your speakers correctly, it is amazing because at one point he's going one way, the castanet's going the other, and you really get that three-dimensional image and sound. And, and that's the great thing about the Sibelius loudspeaker. It's got a very um, shallow cone, so you don't get the punch of the sound coming straight at you like a boom, like a, you get with certain speakers, but you get this wide, natural sound stage and therefore the speaker placement, they don't always have to be towed right in and you can just get it how you want. And by the smallest inkling of towing in or out, it's absolutely right. Now, first and foremost, let's go back. So if you were then sitting with your wife listening to this music or your partner listening to this music, I should say, and you're sitting on a couch, then obviously you want your soundstage, the sweet spot to be a bit wider than just a literally 20 centimeter space where you sit and it's absolutely perfect. You want it wide so you can relax and move a little bit. And there you're going to have to compromise and there you're probably going to have to tow the speakers out a little bit, move them back a little bit. And you've also got to agree how wide you want the soundstage. When you go to a cinema, the first thing you do with your partner is decide where you want to sit. When you're younger, you sit right at the back for obvious reasons, but when you're my age, you want to sit in the place where the sound's good and where you can see the screen without turning your head. And then when you've agreed where you want to sit, that's the width of your speakers in proportion to your depth. Now, obviously, there's a number of really important things. When you are listening to music in your living room or in your sound listening room, the sound isn't coming straight from your loudspeakers straight to your ears. Obviously, it's bouncing all over the place. It'll be bouncing off the ceiling and down, bouncing off the floor and up, bouncing off the walls. And all, all of these reflections will be arriving at your listening point at different times. So sometimes a really big room is fantastic for loudspeakers, especially the space, because they will just fill the space. And, the, and because it's a big room, very big room, you don't get the, the bouncing back. And therefore, when you're sitting in the right spot, you don't have a lot of confusion. So in professional mixing rooms, we use a series of acoustic panels to reflect and some to absorb. And by balancing them, you, you get it about right. But in our living, living rooms, we've got bookcases, we've got sofas, we've got coffee tables, we've got all these things which can cause confusion. So, but I don't want to go too much because there's a separate video on, a, on, on room acoustics. But basically, you, in an ideal world, you would move your loudspeakers out from the back wall. Now, in this case, I've got them probably a, a, a metre out from the back wall. But with Sibelius loudspeaker, the, the wood is so thick, it's 3.3 centimetres thick before the final sanding. Um, and the panels are relatively small. So you've got this really uh, very tight panel. So there's almost no sound at all coming out of the cabinets at the back or the side. So you haven't got to worry about that. So you can actually place them right up against the back wall if you need to and fire them down the room. It's not going to make much difference except for the fact you have what we call edge diffraction where the sound bounces back. But in some rooms it's absolutely fine and I've, I've known people in very small listening rooms have them very close to the back wall and been absolutely delighted and you can move around the room and what happens is you move to the left or the right, but the musicians stay where they are. Now, with other speakers like the LS35As, where you've got, you know, these very thin cabinet walls and they are actually creating a lot of the sound, they really want to be away from that, that wall because when you get it up to the wall, you can get some bass, but you can also get some quite ugly sounds. And there's a little trick that I use um, especially if you've got floor standing speakers, is to get an ordinary radio and put on some speech. 
and just move the radio around nearer the wall, back, out, left and sides and, and, or have someone else do it and sit in the couch and just listen to the voice. And sometimes it'll be a little bit harsh like that and then be nice and warm. And it's the same voice, but just by moving it slightly, you think, hmm, now the voice sounds natural there. And then you do again from the other side. Oh, the voice sounds natural there. That's a very good place to begin because it's the mid range that's really going to where our ears are very sensitive. Now, the other strange thing is with all these reflections in the room, you get what they call nodes. So there's certain parts of the room where you'll be a lot of bass and literally sometimes 20 or 40 centimeters this far difference. There's no bass at all. And if you're just in those nodes, so you also want to make sure where you're sitting. So the first piece of advice to you is decide how you're going to enjoy your listening space on your own or with your partner. And let's assume you're going to do this on your own for the moment. And then you say, right, I don't want my chair, if possible, to be right up against the back wall because maybe I'm going to get some of these reflections of the back wall coming straight into my ear. And if I do, I'll have to put some thick curtains or something behind it to help that a little bit. But you want to really say, well, where do I like to sit? Where do I feel cozy in the room? Where do I feel comfortable? I mean, you might say, well, I don't want to sit over here because there's a draft or there's a window behind me. And I think that's the most important thing. So start with that. So where do you feel comfortable? And then think, well, OK, where can, how can I arrange the speakers in my hi-fi system or my books and my drinks cabinet, whatever, so that this is a nice place to be? because it's got to be a nice place to be. There's no point having to sit, you know, in a certain point and because you'll never relax and enjoy the music. Um, and I'm going to make a, 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 another video soon about listening to music, whether we're listening to hi-fi or whether recordings or whether we're actually listening to the music. But for me, when I'm listening to the music, what I'm really focusing on, what I'm really interested in is following maybe just individual instruments. So what is the bass player doing there? There's a, there's a great um, Willie Nelson CD. It's one of his later ones. And there's a guitarist playing. He's got about four or five guitars playing on the same track. And he's playing this most crazy little riff and tune going along. And, it, and it's amazing. And you can just focus on that. And then you can focus on the bass and come back out. So you're really engrossing yourself. And there, this soundstage of separating all the instruments and front and back is so important. And if you haven't heard that before, if you've never witnessed a soundstage, then you probably haven't got your speakers set up correctly, or they're just not, you know, maybe you haven't got the quality that you need. I mean, I don't want to name names, but there are certain sort of all-in-one boxes which just really won't do if you want that kind of listening. So where was I? Yeah, so you've got your sound station, you've chosen your spot and you've got your speakers. Now, if they are rear ported speakers, so there's a hole in the back where obviously bass comes out, that's going to be critical. And what you'll want to do is play a normal track, a, a, a piece of music you know quite well with a, with a bass playing on it or, or whatever, and just move the speaker from the back Put it right up against the back wall, doesn't matter, and sit down. And it's great if you've got someone to help you. And start to move it forward, move it down the room. So if it's on the stands, if you're lucky to have a wooden floor like I have, you can just slide the stands along. But you move it along, and then you'll find the bass will be very low at the beginning, not much, and then they'll be coming more and more and more. And then one point, it might be uh, too much even. And you just need to move it till the bass sounds crisp. What you're listening for is detail. For that, I like to listen to an acoustic double bass playing. Um, uh, we get we've got re we get requests from Oscar Peterson trio. Starts with a fantastic uh, double bass solo. And when you're listening to that, you can hear all the breathing of the player, but you also hear every single note. So move it around till you get the detail in the bass, because that's what's most important if you're listening to music. If you want to impress your friends or your neighbours, just move it until you get the biggest thump you can. Or better still, stop doing that. Go out and buy a REL subwoofer and just stick that in the room. So do that left and right to match your bass. If you've already done the technique of the with the radio for your mid-range or your voice, or just play voice through your hi-fi, just speaking voice. And if you're lucky, the two will come in the same place. Now, I can't emphasize it enough. You know, 
towing the loudspeaker in is such an important thing. And sometimes, you know, just the tiniest, tiniest movement, just a centimeter like that, or like this, sometimes in some rooms can make a difference because at certain frequencies, it might be this just bouncing off a mirror or bounce, if you should, preferably if you don't have mirrors in your listening room, it might be bouncing off a, a bookcase or something and it can be, can be very annoying. So sometimes the smallest movement, once you've got it roughly in the right place, then spend a lot of time in the smallest movement. And when you think you've got it in a good place, put some masking tape or some sticky tape on the floor or mark on the floor where it was because you will forget after a while because you want to get it back to exactly the same place. And then just move one speaker at a time. Don't always do them both together. Just do one at a time because the effect of the sound coming from one speaker and another speaker has a big effect. There's something called a comb effect that can happen when these, these two frequencies are coming together. And that can be quite unpleasant. It's a bit like phasing. So just move one at a time and move it... First of all, large amounts, and then in the end, just centimeters. And then I mark the floor, and when you've got it just right, again, you've got to check with your chair, make sure, then move, then get up, and walk around the room, and walk to the back, walk to, into the middle, walk to the front, and see, is it only great in one place, or is it actually quite good in other places? And you might think, you know what, if I just move my chair literally this much further back, I'm in the node and I'm getting the full bass response. Uh, it, sometimes it can be very small amounts. You'd be very surprised. So that's basically it. Getting them away from the wall in, in most cases is great, but they don't always have to be halfway down the room. And sometimes when they do, you end up killing all the bass because the bass is coming back out of phase. Now, not everyone has rectangular rooms. Often people have rooms, L-shaped rooms and different shaped rooms. Uh, and that is why this experimentation is so important. Listening area first, choose a sweet spot that you like, and, and then try and work from there. Now, if you've got an alcove and you've got echo coming in the alcove, there's a bit of echo in here, probably from this flat screen, but it's not too bad, to be honest. But... If you've got an alcove and it's it's not, um, you can hear that it's echoey and it's just unpleasant, it comes tiring to listen to because the sound's bouncing around, then sometimes a pair of thick curtains in front of it, which you can just pull together when you're listening to music and open them again, can make a massive difference or a piece of furniture or one of those panels that you saw in the acoustic area. So for room for setting up your speakers in um i want to recommend this book because this is a great book it's called master handbook of acoustics by everest and polman it's a well-read book of mine it's it's very very technical but it explains everything from the decay beats from recording right the way through to to the the sound engineering rooms and what sort of delay, 300 milliseconds and whatever, for your different frequencies. So if you're really into technical things and you really want to understand a bit more about the maths and some of the different effects, then by all means enjoy this. It's quite an interesting book, but it is very technical. But he does have, at the beginning of the sections, a sort of a management overview, which is things are explained in, in quite straightforward ways. And there's an, an interesting section on it, on, on, on the listening room itself. So I hope I've covered everything. I hope you found that useful. And be very pragmatic. Just try and move and try and move again and decide how wide you want your soundstage to be, how where you want to sit in the audience, and then whether you're going to be sitting with a group of people or with the family or with friends, and then start working from that way back. And the secret is, don't take anyone's word for it. If your next door neighbor says, oh, you have to do this and you have to do this, or I say you have to do that, no, you don't. What you do have to do is experiment and try different things. When you've made your markings, try something radically different because you can always go back to those marks again. Now, if, as I say, if you've got a floor where you can move things and slide them quite easily, that's brilliant. So when the cleaner comes or whatever, or you start to clean, you can always move your speakers back exactly where they are. Now, one little trick, you can see here, I've got my loudspeaker and I've got a, a screen here when I'm watching uh, concerts or, 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 or a movie. And if my wife's joining me and we're going to watch a movie together or, or a concert, 
then what I do is I just move my speakers further apart to, just to open up the space so that it's nice for her when she's sitting next to me. And again, I just have the little markers on the floor and I just move them to, to the marks, markers number two. It's very subtle. You don't, want to sit, you don't really notice them. And then when the movie's finished, if I want to listen to something really seriously on my own, I've just finished a recording and I really want to see the, the, the speaker placement because in the mixing rooms, you know, you're so concentrated on so many different things. Sometimes you really just need to take a week off and sit back and relax and a week later, listen again in your own space. And then you think, you know what? That cello is too far to the right. That, that's not good. And, and for that, then I want to be in the perfect space. So I move it to the spots and then I'm OK. And there's, there is no substitute for being relaxed and comfortable for enjoying music, but also for noticing little things. And I want to end this little talk with a, a CD. Um, I'm going to just play it through the speakers with the microphone in the room. It's, it's going to be very basic and it won't sound nearly as good as if you're actually in the room. Um, it's by a, a friend of mine, Sam Vloeymans. Uh, and Sam, he's, he's a Belgian guy. He, he's, a, he's a great trumpet player and he, he plays with all different ensembles. And this project was called Bord de Nord. And there's a track called When She Wept. And it starts with just a bass. Really, it's for the bass player, this track. And the bass is playing and you'll hear there's a little classical guitar. And it sort of builds and sort of after about a minute, you know, the building, it builds up and then the bass starts going down into the low register. And then the accordion comes in and then finally the trumpet comes in, the drums come in and it builds nicely. And this is just a really good example of, of enjoying a piece of music and having that sound stage so that you didn't get to the concert. You weren't there at the time, but when you close your eyes, you really feel that you're there and Sam's playing right in front of you. And the funny thing about it, that's what I was thinking about. The funny thing about it is, of course, that um, <laughs> Sam, um, somebody at the beginning, his chair creaks, and you hear it really clearly, is creaking. And the funny thing is, if that was me recording it, there's no way in hell I would let that happen. But you know what? It doesn't bother me. I mean, because I'm, maybe because I'm not the recording engineer, but it doesn't bother me. It's just kind of funny. And it's just like being real life. When you go to a real concert and you hear a jazz ensemble, you will hear someone's chair creak. So I'm going to play that out for you. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll switch over from this microphone to a, a, a microphone in the room. And um, yeah, it's Sam Vloeymans and it's called When She Wept and it's from the CD. And if you really like it, we, we've got those CDs on, on, on the website somewhere, I think. And well, anyway, you can just send me a message and I'll, I'll tell you where you can get it. It's probably on, on, on Spotify and those other things as well. OK, enjoy. Thank you very much. Enjoy your music. Thank you. 